Okay. Thank you, everyone. Hi. Okay, I'm Tommy. So I've been running an SEO agency for the past nine years. Yep, I've been doing this for quite a while. And uh, basically, I would like to record your screen. Yeah. So I've been running this SEO thing for quite a while. Has seen how Google has changed from you know spamming to to now it's pain to do SEO actually and and there's a lot of things that have changed along the way so just a quick sharing I was told I have strictly 30 minutes so I'm gonna just share for a quick 20 minutes and then leave a 10 minutes FAQ then if you guys have any questions you can let me know very basic things about SEO and then probably just share with you guys about your SEO the plugin and then yeah ask some questions afterwards so um, quick thing uh, what is SEO? What is search engine optimization? You know, people always confuse SEO to AdWords, which is you know putting advertisements in Google. Okay, and a quick introduction on site, off site, and then of course, you know, relating to WordPress, the uh, SEO plugin, which is honestly one of the most important things that that helped me in my in my skill sets uh, back then when I'm starting off. So a quick thing about what is search engine optimization is basically the process of actually ranking. Uh, your websites uh, on the unpaid section. So you know when you when you go inside uh, Google, you see all you see all the ads, ads, ads. Nowadays it's not so clear la. Now now they are trying to blur things between ads and actual actual search engine optimization results. And from what I read along the way, it's basically just to make sure that people actually click more ads because Google's revenues are you know, constantly have to go up. Shareholders need to be paid more. You know so. So yep. So it's the whole idea of not ranking here, but actually here. And why do people want to rank here? Because when you or me, when we search for something, like for example, I want to find uh, the best place to 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 buy certain food or certain services, we will we will trust the first or the second ranking ones instead of advertisements. I mean, I don't know. That's for me, lah. Like, from uh, and from what I read. Uh, you know, 60 to 70 percent of people will still believe in the search engine optimization results compared to AdWords. So, yep, so the whole idea is actually to optimize and improve rankings and there are some methods to go about that, you know, in the background, uh, people like us, you know, which are, which are the search engine optimizers, we will make changes to move in. So, you know, the big three search engine players, your Google, Yahoo and your Bing, people still use Bing because, you know, if you are slightly older in age, you go inside Microsoft and you only see Bing, you will use Bing for the rest of your lives. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's interesting that Bing still has about 5 to 10% of the market. Yeah. And Google has about 70%, uh, at least that's in Singapore. And the rest, okay, actually this is, this is overall, I think the, the amount went up a little bit more, I think it's about 80 plus now. Sorry for the, for the numbers, but it's about 80 plus now. And of course, um, Yahoo. So if, Fun fact, if you guys don't know, Yahoo and Bing has the same results nowadays because they kind of merged. So how search engine works in general. So the whole idea of how Google finds content is through search spiders. So search spiders think of it as computer programs that go website to website to website, something like a spider web. So when you start from for example, if you imagine a spider web, if you're in the middle, the spider climbs around and, and you know, goes around and starts building his web, right? Same thing. So the spider will go from your homepage, which is you know, abc.com, and then there's a link. So the link sends someone else, some, sends the user, okay, in this case, the spider, okay, the spider to another website, and if there's links going around, it will just go all around the world until it hits a wall. So, as the search spider actually goes around and, and look for information, right? It records the information from that site. So what kind of things do they record? Usually uh, the title of the website, the description, the content, you know, what this website is about. So if I'm a SEO business, you know, I will have mainly SEO content. So what the, what the spider will do is it will an analyze and see that, you know, this website is about search engine optimization. You know, if it goes, it goes to, WordPress user site, you know, it'll be about WordPress. If you go to a page that is talking about food, for example, it should be about food. So this is what they do, they record, and then 
after they record, they have a certain number of criteria uh, that they will use to actually present information on their search results. So this, this uh, information is actually presented on, on their search results through a series of up to about, if I don't remember wrongly, it's about 70 criteria. And these 70 criteria can be things like page speed, it can be the concentration of your content. So for example, if my website is about SEO, you know, um, I can't be writing every single word or every sentence has the word SEO. It would be too, what we call over-optimizing. Or if I'm an SEO website, but SEO doesn't appear in my website at all, then that will be under-optimizing. So there's this magic figure where we have to play with to, to get it done. So that's how ranking works. So how Google works. Okay, so if you guys see this formula, I'm not, a, I'm not really a math student, so I have no idea what this is. But um, it, if, you, if you wonder, you know, so, you know, there's two founders uh, of Google, right? There's Sergey Brin and there's Larry Page. So Larry Page actually was the one who came up with this formula uh, where, you know, the, the, the ranking of a website back then, this was... This is something old actually. This is not a new thing for SEO anymore. This is probably, I think, 10, 15 years ago kind of stuff because it's more complicated than this right now. But back then, uh, a website that is very linked to, so just now I was telling you, you know, the links come out from a website and then people send links to, to everywhere, right? So the websites that are linked to the most usually have a very high page rank. So what's a high page rank website? Uh, Microsoft. Apple, for example, Amazon, these are highly ranked two websites. Usually, these websites, if page rank still exists, uh, it will have been a very high page rank website. So, uh, page rank goes from 1 to 10, actually. So, pages like Microsoft, Amazon, all this would have probably been a 10. But uh, there was a point where, you know, people realized that, you know, if my website is like a 7 or 8, they started selling links to people. And Google actually removed this checking of page rank thing. It used to be, I think about eight years ago, I can still check, oh, now I have a five. Now I can go around and say, people, I have a five, and pay me 100 bucks, I put a link there, and then, you know, it's illegal, but people were doing that, so they removed this. But basically, this is still the background ranking, one of the background ranking criteria when it comes to um, uh, ranking on, on, on the search results. So, so I was sharing with you how page rank works. Um, you think of it this way. So three sites. You link, this guy has three votes. And then you link, and then this guy has six votes. So basically this is like a page rank zero, and then this will be like a one or a two. It's a simplified way of looking at it, but that's the whole idea. A website that has a lot of endorsement from someone who has a stronger voting power will have a higher ranking. So it used to work this way. It used to work this way. Okay, but recently, uh, because of you know misuse of page rank, things have kind of changed along the way, and uh, now there are so many new ranking criteria that it's quite a pain to actually work with. So, what is SERPs? If you guys have heard of SERPs before, so it's basically your search engine results page. So when you Google, for example, where's the best uh, co-working space, for example, so or like best co-working space or just co-working space, okay. If you see reword ranking, it's what we call that's the search engine result page. That's called the SERPs. Okay, so SERPs is not the same as page rank, but SERPs rankings come up based on a quite a different set of uh, criteria. So a general look at it usually is number of links you have, you know, the links accumulation speeds, the type of links that you get, your website content, how fast your website loads. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of criteria that, that actually do come into place to rank well in your SERPs. So, so right now, nowadays, people actually learn SEO, they have to learn two things, usually, what we call on-site optimization, which is on your website, what you can control. Okay, so what you can control are things like your content, you know, are you, are you writing good enough uh, information on your website, is it informative enough? Okay, do you block a lot? Blogging is very important in, in SEO. If you blog often and you have to blog in a certain manner, you know, like minimum of like a couple, couple of hundreds of, of words for your content. It used to be, you know, 
you can write 100 words and then Google will pick it up and it still goes into the results. Now it doesn't. Usually it has to be about five to 600 words of content, for example. So these are some of the criteria of on-site. Off-site is when you actually try to source and look for links to point towards you. So just now I was sharing links have to come to your website, right? So you have to go and look for links. So because SEO is such a lucrative thing, right? There are so many people around the world always looking for links. So everywhere that has a free access link is like spammed out everywhere. So if you guys are WordPress users, you always get rubbish comments coming in and then you have to delete rubbish comments. And yeah, it's so automated by all these people who are trying to do SEO that most comments, I don't even bother looking at good comments anymore. I just delete the whole chunk. You know, I don't even open my comments anymore because it's just so spammed out right now nowadays. Yeah, so for search engine optimizers, it's almost so difficult to even try to get a link nowadays and yeah it's difficult to get a link so the only way that people always say you know what's a good seo is it's just don't do any seo because it's just so tough to do it now so on-site optimization so you know when you look at seo content they always say that content is king yes it's true okay uh you can actually build a website without um rank a website without actually ha getting any links you can okay uh, so you must have relevant content definitely but you know when you want to rank for uh, uh, something right <clears throat> you realize nowadays instead of front pages ranking on Google when you search for something it's usually the blog post that ranks for something you know when you how do I do this what is this where do I find uh, the best food in Singapore, for example, and content is very important. That's why when you go and search for certain services, the listicles, the top 10 uh, photographers in, in Singapore, or the top 10 uh, co-working spaces, it's not co-working spaces like we work ranking number one on Google anymore. It's content because now Google likes to be the informative uh, platform where people find information, right? So content is really important. If you really want to rank well, uh, then you have to have really good content. Uh, usually what I define by really good content is a well-researched content. Uh, 1,500, 2,000 words. Usually if you see those that are ranking really well, usually you have quite a big number of words. And of course, you know, what, number one, why is this guy number one? Number two, why is this guy number two? And these are the things that uh, gives Google a reason to actually rank you higher. So there are people you know, with almost no links coming into their websites, but because the content is so good and because a lot of people land on the websites, people spend a lot of time reading. So for example, if you go into the website and then you realize this page is bullshit, you just click back within five seconds, it, it, will, it will actually give a down vote to that website. But if you actually stay on and then you read the content for the next 10 minutes, Google is going to think, okay, great, I gave this user a good site and it will actually help that website to rank higher. And, you know, and it has to have relevant content. If you're trying to rank for, for co-working space, you can't be writing about, about uh, chicken rice. You know, you can't, it can't be two separate things. So on-site optimization, content is signaled through the use of keywords. Uh, if you guys understand what a meta title and description is, it's basically when you go into Google. Let me see what I can show you. Meta title and description is this. So this is your title. This is your description. So you can actually optimize this to improve your rankings. So the title and the descriptions and then the URLs, these are the ways that most SEOs will use to improve your ranking. You know, the title is actually the most important thing, I would say. If you want to rank for search engine optimization, if you realize it says SEO here, SEO here, SEO here, and then SEO here, you see SEO is appearing everywhere. It has to be within the title and the description. Okay. And then, of course, within your content, it has to have, um, it has to have relevant content. Okay, so, of course, just now I said, you know, it used to be a wild west, it used to be very easy to rank things once you spam enough of it. So I don't know, if you go back 10 years ago and you look at websites, there have been cases where you actually go onto one of the top three ranking websites and then you just walk, get inside the page and then you see 
why is that particular keyword appearing like a thousand times? And they realized that back then, you know, the, the computers were so stupid back then. Okay, like, not really, like, but you know, they were, they, the, the, the programmers didn't actually write all these counter codes, right? So what happened was these people just spammed the whole websites with the, that, that particular word, and then it actually helped them to rank. So in, and after that, uh, Google came out with a few uh, algorithmic changes. So they are called Google Panda and Google Penguin, actually. These two animals came after all the bad boys and those people who over-optimize through spamming, you know, the whole content is just, you know, for example, co-working and then like co-working, co-working, co-working. Uh, this is the best co-working. Why is this co-working space the best? And then you read all the content, it's like co-working coming up everywhere. And then, yeah, so this uh, algorithm actually penalized the websites. So now if you do the same thing again, or you try to do the same thing to your websites nowadays, you will realize that your ranking falls instead of going up. Yep. Offsite SEO. So offsite SEO is basically getting links from other people. So for example, my good friend Robert over here, I might be able to ask him for a link. You know, he's a nice guy, he will give me a link. Okay. But if I if I if I go around and I start buying links and, and this same vendor is selling to everyone. It's called a link scheme. But actually everyone does that, but just saying. So everyone, so link schemes are, you know, okay, let me, let me sell you this link and then, and then I sell you this link and then I charge you 50 bucks and then 50 bucks and then 50 bucks. In the end, Google is going to find out this fellow is trying to do something funny. I'm selling links, right? He's going to penalize me. And all of you who bought links from me, everyone will, will get affected by it. And link schemes can also mean that, you know, hey, Robert, wanna, let's do SEO together. I link to you, you link to me, you know, everybody's happy, what? You know, we just share links together. And then, hey, why not I link to you, you link to me as well. And then it's just like a network of, of, of uh, sharing. You know, if it's a small network, it's fine. If it becomes a big, you know, manipulative network, then no. So the whole idea of Google not liking all these link schemes is because you're trying to manipulate and trying to make things unnatural. They like things natural. You know, everyone likes things natural. So Google doesn't like unnatural things. So offsite links are not as important anymore, but it's still important. Uh, link sources, where it's coming from, the, the anchor text and the anchor URL. Okay, so what is an anchor text? You know, when you, when you see a link on a website, it need not be www.abc.com. It can be, it can be Tommy, Co, and then it links to my website, for example. It can be Robert, and then it links to WordPress website. You know? And this is what we call the anchor text. So what is the anchor text so important? Okay, it's so important because if I want to say that you know, Robert is an expert in, in, in databases, for example, then I say I will point to him as database expert. I won't point to him as ABC expert or, or whatever expert. You know because that's the endorsement. So the anchor text is actually one of the most important things when it comes to SEO, okay? And then the anchor URL. So of course the anchor URL is the URL to send the, the particular person to. So the anchor URL is the address to that person. Yep. So overlinking spam. So same thing as content spam. Overlinking spam is basically the whole idea of uh, how people started coming in and you know, I realized, why not, instead of buying five links, why not I buy 50? Or how about I buy 500, you know, I'm gonna rank higher and be better than everyone and make all the millions, right? And that, that was what happened back then. People started buying, you know, why not just go to, go to like, you know, Pfeiffer and Freelancer and like, let's buy 5,000 links, you know? And, and that was what happened. When people started overlinking and you started having, you know, like in one day you gain 5,000 links, for example. <coughs> Google is going to know that you're trying to be funny. Google will know that you're trying to be manipulative. And that is where they penalize you again. So if you go to any SEOs, if you guys hire any SEOs, they always tell you, I need six months. I need nine months. If they tell you they can do it in one month, be careful. Because that means they are going to, you know, going to start stuffing the duck. They're just going to stuff all your links towards you in a very fast manner. And that's not healthy and you will eventually get penalized. So a light penalty is when you drop in ranking. A big penalty is when you disappear from the face of this earth. You know, your website really completely disappears. I've done it before, so do not go there. That was back then when suddenly Penguin came in and then you know, I was like, 
I was also stuffing. So once you know how to screw up, you know how to not screw up. Yeah, so I, I, I learned the hard way. I screwed up. My website went from being ranking number one for a certain keyword. That was my own business back then. And then it just disappeared from the face of this. Earth. Yeah, you know, one day traffic of a few hundred to zero. It just disappeared. So be careful of playing too hard with fire. Yeah. So a little bit more about about offsite optimization. So if you guys are figuring you know, where, where links usually come from, people are always interested, right? Forums. So you, if you guys are active in forums, you see a lot of people like to, like to have, you know, underneath their signature, they have a link there, or you know, like, oh, I like to refer this, this website, you know, but it doesn't seem to follow the flow of the content. Yeah, people, these are SEOs, and then they will go into forums, and then they will just, their, their main objective is just to get the link in. Okay, that's one. Profile pages, uh, certain forum profile pages uh, still work. University pages, you know, I'm, I'm sharing a few, yeah. So profile pages still work. If I'm not wrong, Pinterest profile page also still works. I'm not too sure. That was half a year ago. I haven't checked. I don't use it anymore. Social media, social bookmarking pages, blog sites. Blog sites like WordPress, you know, wordpress.com. That's a, that's a good place to get a link. Blogger.com. I don't know who still uses that, but blogger.com is a place where you can set up a website and then get a link. But because no one endorses that site, right? So there's not much in, impact. Yeah, unless you have a very old and, and you know, back then when I was in my primary school, we used to have blogger sites and then I would just tell my friends, please send me a link, I send you a link. You know, that, those kind of sites might still be very powerful nowadays. Yeah, you can actually use it for SEO purposes. YouTube sites also gives you links. So yeah, the general idea of getting links is, is just to go to this site, put in a bit of hard work, try to get your name in, but nowadays it's not that effective anymore. End of the day, uh, a good SEO will tell you, write good content, go to a good website, a reputable website, ask them or even beg them to put your content onto the page. Do not pay them, but everyone pays. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so all these places are, are where you can get, get websites, like, you know, like they will say, you know, come up with a nice infographic and, and people will want to share your content. So, for example, if, if why does, why does pages like, uh, uh, what's that page called? Uh, Mothership. Why does Mothership always come up with very nice infographics very soon after the government announces something? It has got to do with SEO. When you have a nice infographic, people actually use your content. They'll have to give you a credit, right? They will, they will send a link to you. They will say credit to Mothership. Mothership gains in SEO rankings. That's why you see within a few hours of getting the, the, once the budget is out, for example, Mothership gets the contents out into infographics. Within three hours, four hours, usually it comes out very fast. Or they already stand by the, con con the things and then just put the numbers in. Yeah, because infographics are a way to get people to share your content. So the whole idea is to provide good content, people actively share. This is the, the, the what we call white hat SEO. La. This is the clean way of doing SEO. La. Yeah. Okay, so, Coming back to WordPress, so if you guys use WordPress and you guys use your SEO plugin, right? Um, I think one reason why it's so popular because if you want to target a couple of focus keywords, for example, the focus keywords you put it in, it hints you uh, in a certain manner where you are, you are, people don't like to see, okay, so now, now it's actually a green button, but if you don't do it actually in a very nice way, right? It's a red button and you just feel very, you just want to turn it green. Uh. People just don't like to see red color stuff, right? So, so they will give you all the hints. They will tell you, for example, your meta description is too long, you know, it should be underneath 120. So if you are, you are a budding SEO, right? I would I I I suggest actually using WordPress and then using your SEO to actually learn uh, all these um, important things that actually do affect SEO. So like they will tell you to, to lengthen or shorten your description. Do you have your title? If, it's, if you're trying to target your SEO as a keyword, you know, is it inside your title? Is it inside your description? If it is, it becomes a good result and it turns green. The more green, overall it will become green. So like for example, the image uh, alternate attribute. So when you post an image, you can actually add some words inside the image. I don't know whether you know it's, it's part of coding. La. 
it's uh, alternate attribute and key phrases are in the subheadings and yeah these are the things that you can actually adjust along the way so change your meta description and then your URL as well it also needs to be inside your URL so usually when you write content in uh, in in your WordPress site what WordPress will do is it will just throw it into your, your URL already so if it's within your title it's more likely more, most likely in your URL so you should get a green for it <coughs> yeah so in this case it's a good job you know you have description it's in your headings the text length is above 500 words which you also always likes to enforce you know it might at least have 300 words for example uh, it's inside the URL it's inside the title and then you use this as a very good guide to improve your your overall optimization and then they have keyword density as well so just now I said the keyword being in every single uh, sentence is not good but if it's too little there's no impact so now it says it's 0.4 percent you should you should increase it to maybe one percent then you will just do it like, until it goes on goes on red green nah. and then you're happy you look at the thing turn green you feel good and then you move on to the <coughs> next next article and the other good thing about your SEO is also your your sitemaps sitemaps are important if you guys go to your uh used to be called webmaster to it's called search console now yes yeah yeah i'm in the old school mindset yeah so sitemaps are good for google to find your whole website and then tell the spiders this is the address of my website go in and find all these pages sitemaps are useful and yours comes together with it it's nice okay so i am almost running out of time so a quick uh, shout out for myself <laughs> Uh, 22nd, 23rd, I'm having a SkillsFuture Claimable class. Uh, if you guys are interested to come for the class, you guys can talk to me later on. Or, yeah, it's a full day, two days class, and you can visit my website, www.seogig.sg. And if you want to talk to me or text me anything, you can just take my number or take my email, don't spam me. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I have about five minutes to have a quick chat. So anyone has any questions about SEO? It was a very fast one. So, yeah. I have a question. Um, so about the keyword loading. Yep. If you are writing something and um, so like my website is mm. about wine. Yep. So I talk about wine. Mm. And there's wine makers yep. and there's wineries mm. and wine labels mm. and wine rates. Yep. And, you yep. know, so, so there's a lot of wine, yes. Right. <laughs> so, so should, should somebody be careful about, you know, just, I mean, you're practically, you're talking about something, but, yep. you know, should you substitute the word for, you know, mm. grape juice or, you know, like, is mm. it going to penalize you for something that just makes practical sense for you as a website? I think, end of the day, as long as it's natural in terms of uh, your content, right? So, yeah. So as long as it doesn't come off as you're just forcing it in, when your content, you're, this, this wine grape is, is in, from this certain wine region, the sentences must actually flow and you're not trying to force it in. It should, the Google shouldn't penalize you. But end of the day, uh, Google still functions. It's not humans behind it. It's computers behind it. So if this particular word wine keeps appearing and it appears too much, right, it will still affect a little bit. Yeah, so I think a good way to look at it is why not you go to your competitors' websites and then you look at their content. Like the first three ranking, you know, how much of that wine word appears in all these pages and then you see how, how many percent they are playing with and then you will know roughly how, how much of your content should have this. So yeah. I, and then to piggyback kind of on top of that question, yeah. um, there's also in my plugin or mm. in my theme, you yeah. know, there's what tags that Correct. you put and Correct. so um, and I have a lot of wine events yep. and so for and that's the main function of mm. the website is wine tasting events Correct. so the wine tags mm. are like wine tasting events and mm -hmm. Italian wine and mm. French wine mm. and so again there's a lot of wine mm. so is that I'm wondering if that's also working against me instead of working in my favor like mm. French wine, Italian wine, wine tasting events, 
uh, wine dinners, wine, you know? As long as, I, I would say from, from my perspective, as long as it's relevant to your content, do not try to unforce it. Because you're not, you're not trying to manipulate Google. You're just trying to give good content to your users who actually do land on your website. But I would say, um, of course, there are ways to dilute your, your, your overall keyword density. So maybe at the bottom, you can write a little bit of like a write-up kind of thing for, of yourself or of your website. And then you don't try not to put the word wine inside. And you can dilute the content overall so that it doesn't overly wine out the whole website. Yeah. Good question. Anyone else? Uh, okay. Um, image alt text, what's the mm. perspective? I would say try to put in your keyword. If image alt text actually does help you to rank on Google Images. So when you, when you want to rank on Google Images for whatever reason, sometimes people do search images for, for whatever reasons, right? Put in your keyword that you want to rank within Google Images for that. Yeah. So alt text, just use the exact keywords that you want to use. Yep. And also, usually alt text, you can also have image descriptions as well. Yeah, you should just try to put in the keywords as much as possible. Because alt text and uh, image descriptions count into your, your actual keyword density for your actual ranking. It counts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, my question is, how does it uh, mm. good balance between writing for SEO and mm. writing for human people? Like you said, like 1,500 mm. words. But for us, uh, for me, I don't really want to read, read the long <laughs> uh, If you ask me as a white hat SEO, I'll tell you right for humans. Lah. But, but uh, most SEOs are grey. They are never white. One, lah, huh? So uh, end of the day, Google will always tell you to write content for humans so that you know, people will read the article. But if you are me, I go in, I see 10 listicles, I only read the title. I think everyone does that. No one really reads content nowadays. Yeah, so sometimes when I write blogs for my customers, the, the content is like, yeah, I just close my eyes and I just write. Because people really don't really read uh, reading the content anymore. It, it just sounds like fluff. I come from SMU, la. we are fluff. La. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 I, write, I, write, I write content, but usually it feels like fluff to me, but people still read it. But the most important thing is, I would say, really write the titles really well. I mean the subtitle, subheadings, and then your subheadings, 10 points, you know, it's a, it's a good thing to have. And then, write for humans. My, answer, my short answer to you is write for humans. Try as much as possible. But if you know your website doesn't really have much human traffic, then you can always write for the good. I cannot advise you that, but huh? And what if I wrote mm. for humans and use videos? They still show that I'm happy faces. So when you write for humans, what they mean by write for Google or right, for humans is sometimes people try to force so many keywords in that the article doesn't make any sense. So that's why Google always says write for humans. But end of the day, you still have to optimize for your keywords. You still have to optimize the usage of keywords. Yeah, so, so like for example, actually something else that I can teach you guys, if it's wine, there are other ways of calling wine wine. That's vino, right? That's, yeah, so actually you can substitute it for vino and it actually has the same effect. So Google does read synonyms. It does read synonyms. So, so if you think that you're using wine too much, you can substitute it for Vino, but do not hard, hard try to you know, like change your whole content into Vino now. Yeah, it will, it will look unnatural. Yeah, so that's why, that's why I say you have to write for humans. End of the day, humans are the one reading your content. If you try hard and then you start to substitute all the wines into Vino, then it looks weird. And then like, why is this, why is this fella telling me wine and then it keeps turning into Vino and then to wine again? Then the content doesn't flow. Yeah, so right for humans. The, the correct answer is right for humans. Yes. Yeah. How about using uh, different media in your post? Let's say you have made a tweet, you have made a YouTube video. Mm. Do those help your SEO? Mm, not exactly. I, as long as, uh, I mean, from, from Google's perspective, as long as you write content and then you know, your embeds actually help to improve the experience of them reading this article, do it. You want, because one of the ranking factors is also when people land on your site and actually stay on your site for a long time and read through your content and flow through your content. Yeah, so, so keeping them there and, and you thinking that your tweets and your embeds will help, then definitely you put it in, put it in, yeah. 
uh, that guy in black. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll just check if there's uh, a lot of SEO plugins out there. Yeah. I saw that you recommended to use mm. SEO. Correct. So how do we determine which SEO is best for? I think end of the day. I have not used the rest because yours has been has been quite effective for me and this is the I mean just now the screenshots were, were free versions if you actually pay, do the paid version you can actually do multiple focus keywords and then you can it will tell you you know this keyword is under optimized write more of this keyword or you know it's too much yeah so yours is quite quite I, they also keep updated lah. so when when you see that there are some updates from Google for example, keyword density. Or they ha they have experts behind who act who who knows SEO. So they will also update the 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 percentages and stuff along the way, so that they will remind you that that you are doing too much of this, too little of this. Certain updates from Google, you should change your content to a to a to a certain level of density. Yeah. So I still recommend yours because it has been uh, it has been my right hand man for the past nine years. Yeah. But when he says that rank maths are mm. Mm. Because uh, that whatever you uh, offering mm. for as a payment, mm. as for, um, pay, uh, you have to pay for yep. the, uh, for this function. Mm. Uh, Rank right they offer the free. But I think users, I would say, user friendly, very user friendly, very uh, idiot proof. But so if you you're, is right I haven't tried. Yeah. I haven't tried. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a hundred and one percent user SEO guy. <laughs> So, what is your best uh, sources for free and paid links? Hmm. Mm. Good question. Mm. Sorry, what was the question? So he said, where's the, where's the best sources to find free and un non-paid links? Free and paid oh, Free and paid links. Ah. Oh, I cannot tell you where to buy, of course. It's trade secret. <laughs> <laughs> trade secret. But what kind of things are those that we can share? Mm, it can be various, but at the end of the day, I would say usefulness-wise, definitely it has to come from certain websites that are blog sites. You know, they are very popular blog sites uh, of that specific content. And, and sometimes they don't, say, they don't say that you are paying for it. It's kind of like, you know, Review fees. They will charge quite review fees to review your content it's and it pay. Like, uh, niche Correct. Content. Blog post lah. Niche blog post. You know SEO. Yeah. Yep. I would say that would be the most effective lah. If you want to say other sources Actually, of paid ads. You're, you're, you're paying them for them to, to post. Anchor mm. to your website. You, or submit my 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 your article. Own desk, your own mm. Correct. Yeah. <coughs> Is guest posting worth it or is it Yes, it is still worth it. I think the main, uh, because end of the day, every time you write a content, that particular site actually improves their own SEO and standing. It does. So because what Google likes is a website that has constant updated content. So when you provide them a good guest post, it helps them to drive traffic. And at the same time, it helps them to rank themselves up. They will love it. But at end of the day, it's so many people are sending into the webmasters emails every single day, you know, post my content, post my content. So, which is why I say, you know, sometimes you have to like tip them a little bit. Yeah. Um, is Google still penalizing us for, let's say, outbound links? Let's say if we mm. write an article, mm. and of course we have to cite sources. Yep. If you have a lot of those, will your site be penalized for that? No. You should always credit people if you really uh, have to credit and then actually outbound links are good for your ranking it shows that you are a a good source of information you, you know when a good encyclopedia always ranks out to other people because they cite other people same thing when you write a good article if you can get refer to a certain research article or a certain newspaper article and say that I got this information from this particular pages it makes you look good as well because you are credible you, your information comes from credible sources yeah but of course, do not go and rank, link out to some weirdo <laughs> that is doing SEO spam and you might get some flag from it. Yeah. All right, we're going to have a quick, oh, we do one more and then we'll have a okay, break. Yeah. And then Tab's still running for another couple of minutes. And then we'll go back. grab the beer. Yeah. It was just a follow up to that yep. guest post. Um, does it have to be unique content when you guest post for someone or can you just recycle? 
Transit Honestly, there are so many people doing SEO nowadays, I don't think there's fresh content. Yeah, <laughs> there's no more fresh content unless it's about new things that are happening like 2019 Australian wildfire, you know, that's something new. Then you can write something new. But honestly, old content to do with WordPress, to do with your SEO, everyone has been writing 10 million articles about it. Google also knows. Yeah, but Google prefers you to write a content and then adding on to it. So for example, back then your article was 500 words, increase it to 700 because you found new information about it. Increase it to 1,000. And Google likes such things because it shows that you, know, you are someone who constantly finds new, new knowledge and you're willing to share it with the world. Google wants to rank you because you are sharing information and Google is a source of information and knowledge. Yeah. We'll have a quick five, ten minute break and then start the other talks. We can catch Tommy yep. a bit later on as well.